After eight years of waiting, Sierra Space's reusable lift body space plane, Dream Chaser, is finally almost ready to fly. Yes, it's true. This is confirmed by Sierra Space saying that the vehicle is going to experience its last testing phase before it makes its way to the launch pad. That is such good news for NASA because the space shuttle successor is expected to help the agency move away from total dependence on SpaceX Dragon, which is currently the sole spacecraft for NASA's transport missions to the ISS. However, an important question arises here, faced with a modern vehicle like the Dragon, is the design approach that Sierra Space applied on the Dream Chaser still useful in this era? Let's update the latest information surrounding this new vehicle and answer that question in today's episode of TechMap. Dream Chaser is about to launch for the first time later this year. This is unofficially announced by Sierra Space in a tweet responding to users. We should have more details on the actual launch date once it gets closer, they added. On February 2, we saw the presence of a full-stack Tenacity version, including both the Dream Chaser space plane and its Shooting Star cargo module at NASA's Neil Armstrong test facility, where they would experience the pre-flight tests ahead of moving to NASA's Kennedy Space Center. Fast forward to March 7, the initial phase of environmental testing was finished on the vehicle. Over the past month, the Sierra Space Dream Chaser and its cargo companion, Shooting star underwent rigorous vibration testing while stacked in launch configuration inside the mechanical vibration facility at the NASA complex. In readiness for launch from Kennedy Space Center, the tests exposed the vehicles to the intense conditions of launch vibrations using the world's most powerful spacecraft shaker table. This critical phase of pre-flight testing included SIN vibration testing, a separation shock test, and wing deployment. Following this critical test phase, the Shooting Star cargo module was demated from Dream Chaser and transported ported from the Armstrong Test Facility Space Environments Complex to the nearby In Space Propulsion Facility ISB. On March 15, Dream Chaser arrived at the ISP facility to join the cargo module for the thermal vacuum testing, a crucial step in the journey towards the launch pad and another milestone in Sierra Space's mission to redefine the future of space commercialization. Specifically, Dream Chaser will be exposed to low ambient pressures, low background temperatures, and replicated dynamic solar heating to simulate the environment the spacecraft will encounter during its first mission to the space station. So, how will the process typically work? Normally, first of all, the spacecraft, or a representative model of it, is placed inside a large vacuum chamber. This chamber is sealed and evacuated to simulate the vacuum of space, where there is no atmospheric pressure. The vacuum chamber is equipped with heating and cooling systems that can replicate the wide temperature fluctuations experienced in space. Temperatures can range from extremely cold, as low as a minor 250 degrees Celsius when facing away from the sun to very hot, up to 250 degrees Celsius. Celsius or more when exposed to direct sunlight. During thermal vacuum testing, the spacecraft is subjected to various simulated mission scenarios. This can include exposure to direct sunlight, eclipse, when the spacecraft is in the shadow of another celestial body and thermal cycling rapid temperature changes. Throughout the testing process, sensors are used to monitor temperature levels both inside and outside the spacecraft. Engineers closely monitor how the spacecraft's systems and components respond to these extreme temperatures. While the spacecraft is exposed to vacuum and extreme temperatures, its systems and subsystems are tested to ensure they continue to function as expected. This includes testing the performance of propulsion systems, electronics, thermal control systems, and other critical components. Thermal vacuum testing often involves cycling the spacecraft between extreme hot and cold temperatures to simulate the thermal stresses it will experience during its mission. This helps ensure that the spacecraft can withstand these temperatures temperature variations without any degradation in performance or structural integrity. In some cases, thermal vacuum testing may involve prolonged exposure to vacuum and temperature extremes to assess the long-term durability of the spacecraft and its components. Finally, the data collected during thermal vacuum testing is analyzed to assess the spacecraft's performance under simulated space conditions. Any issues or anomalies observed during testing are addressed and resolved before the spacecraft is cleared for flight. That is the general process for any spacecraft but SpaceX could break some rules. In fact, they came up with a new approach called iteration. This rapid iterative development approach has been the basis for all of SpaceX's major innovative innovations, including Falcon, Dragon, and Starlink. This methodology allows for rapid prototyping, real-world testing, and quick iterations, making it easier to identify flaws and implement improvements. In the case of Dragon spacecraft in its wild days, for example, the vehicle also experienced all kinds of testing like Dream Chaser's tenacity, but SpaceX did it by launching the whole thing and then they saw what breaks and then fixed what needs to be fixed.
That is nearly the opposite of what Sierra Space is doing, meaning doing the full tests on the ground in advance, ensuring everything is perfect, and then praying for the first launch. The SpaceX approach is quite different compared to that of another famous space program, NASA's Space Shuttle. NASA's design method is too risky. Because the shuttles had people on board, NASA's test flights had to be much more conservative. Even though their engineers were aware of the issues with the shuttle, there was an imbalance between award and punishment when flagging it. Elon Musk has realized it clearly. He suppose that if you make a change and something goes wrong, this could lead to a big punishment. Two fatal accidents on the shuttle are the most obvious evidence. By contrast, if you make a change and it goes right, you only get a small reward. The biggest problem with the space shuttle was that its design froze. Due to all the space shuttle missions being crewed, design changes were high risk and low reward. Starship does not have anyone on board so we can blow things up. Another limitation of Sierra Space's design methodology versus SpaceX's is time consuming. The estimated figure figure given for Tenacity is eight years. Not kidding. The Colorado-based company kicked off its work on Tenacity in 2016, and so far, the vehicle is almost ready to fly for the first time. Whereas SpaceX began developing the Dragon spacecraft in late 2004 and made it into operation in 2010, six years for the first version. The Dragon 2 spacecraft took five years, meaning its production was started in 2014 and it entered the service in 2019. It can be said that a second space plane should be much faster to build with the knowledge and experience gained due to the first time building. However, perhaps this would not work for Sierra Space. Currently, the second space plane in their Dream Chaser cargo fleet, namely Reverence, is in development. The process is along with its Shooting Star cargo module at the Dream Factory in Colorado. The company announced it in their tweet on March 11. The image attached shows a space plane in early production and practically just a frame of the Dream Chaser vehicle. The manufacture of the second spacecraft seemingly began in 2022 when they tweeted, and then there were two with a picture of a second Dream Chaser. The image is similar to what we saw in the 2024 image, and not much has changed in those two years, which means there's a lot more work to do before it gets to its final stages. One more tidbit, in 2018, a NASA OIG report on the vehicle gave some additional evidence on the company's plans. It was quoted saying, Sierra Nevada's plan to build a single Dream Chaser spacecraft for CRS-2 missions is a single point of failure that represents substantial technical and schedule risks for the ISS program. During a visit to Sierra Nevada in June 2017, company officials told us they had no plans to build a second Dream Chaser. In August 2017, ISS program officials said Sierra Nevada was considering building a second Dream Chaser to be completed by 2021, but no decision had been made as of October 2017. In the event of a failure, Sierra Nevada officials told us in June 2017 that a second spacecraft could be built from spare parts parts without additional costs to NASA, they said the company has also made it clear that there are many challenges in developing this spacecraft, from finding ways to increase payload capacity to revolutionizing launch processes. The wasting of time could impact NASA's important projects. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.